By the light of the moon on November 14, 1940, German bombers began a relentless crusade against the English city of Coventry. The people below were helpless against the firestorm that blazed through the city centre, leaving death and destruction in its wake. But perhaps the greatest wound of all? That Churchill knew and did nothing to save them. Today on Nutty History, we're covering the Coventry Blitz and the ensuing conspiracy that Churchill sacrificed one city to win the war. But first, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more mysteries from history. Like many other areas in the English West Midlands, Coventry grew into a booming industrial city after the Industrial Revolution, responsible for production of cars, bicycles, airplane engines, and the big one, munitions. Its metal and woodworking capabilities made it easy to shift the city's production goals during wartime. In World War I, Coventry was responsible for a quarter of British aircraft produced, and in World War II, it again resumed its role as the hub for military production. Only issue? It made poor Coventry the perfect target for a wartime bombing blitz. The German Luftwaffe began small attacks on Coventry from August to October of 1940. Unfortunately, a small bombing raid is still a freaking bombing raid. 176 people were killed, while 680 more were injured. Among the casualties in this first mini-blitz was MVP of the bomb squad, Sandy Campbell. Campbell was called up after an unexploded bomb fell, stopping production on two nearby factories. Another term for unexploded bomb? Not yet exploded bomb. Campbell discovered a delayed action fuse on the bomb that he couldn't remove, so Plan B was enacted, moving the bomb to a safe location. They moved the dangerous explosive in a truck, or a lorry, as the Brits would call it. Campbell then had the fun task of lying beside the bomb in the truck, listening in case it started to tick. After reaching a certain distance, the bomb was safely disposed of, only for Campbell to be killed the following day while attempting to defuse another Coventry bomb. That's a tough week at work. Sandy Campbell was posthumously honoured with the George Cross. Give this man all of the awards! But the biggest raid on Coventry was yet to come. On November 14, 1940, the Germans began Operation Moonlight Sonata, a pretty name for the very ugly destruction that followed. 515 German bombers dropped high explosive and incendiary bombs on Coventry for about 10 hours. The high explosive bombs knocked out the city's infrastructure, destroying the water supply, electricity and the phone lines while cratering the roads. The incendiary bombs, much like their namesake implies, fell into buildings with already damaged roofs and lit them aflame. This tactical combination set Coventry ablaze while also preventing the fire department from doing their job. The damaged roads made it difficult for fire engines to manoeuvre, the broken telephone lines made it impossible to communicate about the worst of the fires and prioritise accordingly, and the water shortage eliminated, well, the best and most obvious defence against fire. In the ensuing firestorm, two-thirds of the city's buildings were destroyed. As for the factories, one-third were destroyed, one-third were badly damaged, and the remaining third were just slightly damaged. Is anything not damaged? An estimated 568 people were killed, with about a thousand more sustaining injuries. The Coventry Blitz was a new kind of bombing raid, and it later inspired the British. Basically, they figured, hey, that sucked a lot. We should do that to them! The British got their revenge in their own incendiary heavy attack on Mannheim. Coventry marked a shift in bombing strategy, whereas before precision attacks on specific military targets were the status quo, now the focus shifted to area bombing of entire cities. Great. A tough break for Coventry. But where's the conspiracy? In 1974, Frederick William Winterbottom, an officer in the Royal Air Force during World War II, published a book about ULTRA, the ultra-secret super-classified intelligence project that intercepted encrypted German radio messages during the war. And Winterbottom had his own bombshell to drop. He claimed that through ULTRA, German communication about the Coventry bombing was intercepted and decoded before the Blitz actually happened. According to Winterbottom, Churchill himself knew of the raid and commanded that no protective measures would be taken to defend the city. If they were to act, the Germans would know that the Allies had the ability to obtain and decode their transmissions, and the loss of this secret weapon would be more detrimental to the war than the loss at Coventry. It's important to note that as far as conspiracy advocates go, 
Winterbottom wasn't some random theorist with internet access and too much time on his hands. Not only was he British military, he was a top-ranking member of MI6. He was also directly involved with Ultra and supervised the officers who delivered Ultra-decrypted messages to commanders in the field. He's also not the only person to make the claim. Journalists slash authors Anthony K. Brown and William Stevenson also picked up the theory while changing some of the details. While Winterbottom claimed that Churchill found out about the Coventry bomb just a few hours before it occurred, K. Brown and Stevenson say he learned of the Blitz with more advanced notice. All agree, though, that Churchill made a cold-hearted yet pragmatic decision to let the city of Coventry burn for the greater good. But what would a conspiracy be without its critics? Many historians debunk these claims with a different story. Churchill knew that a bombing was going to occur, he just didn't know where. On November 11, 1940, a German message was decoded that referred to Operation Moonlight Sonata and a mysterious code, Korn. Korn, we now know, was referring to Coventry as the location of a bombing. But according to the anti-conspiracy side, its meaning wasn't understood at the time. As for Moonlight Sonata, the Air Ministry interpreted this code to mean that the operation would take place at night under a full moon, suggesting between the 15th to 20th of November, and that it would be a three-part bombing. Churchill was warned of the impending raid, but not where it would occur. On November 14th, the day of the Coventry bombing, Churchill received word that Moonlight Sonata was likely to take place that evening. According to one of his personal secretaries, John Colville, Churchill was headed out to the countryside that afternoon when he received a lockbox containing the most recent intercepted German signals. Upon reading them, he demanded the car be turned around so he could spend the night in London. This gives credence to what Colville and many others have claimed, that Churchill believed London to be the target of the attack that night. He returned because he didn't want to abandon the city during its hour of need. But what Churchill truly read inside the lockbox, we may never know. Whatever the case, the Germans weren't finished with Coventry. The city experienced two more air raids in 1941 and 1942, forever synonymising its name with destruction. Do you subscribe to the conspiracy theory of the Coventry Blitz? And if you do, did Churchill make the right call? Let us know in the comments and check out our other super bomb videos. Sorry. For more nutty history.